Padmasana is one of the most iconic yoga positions. And many people want to learn how to do it or learn how to do it better. And for good reason. This is, in my opinion, the most comfortable way to sit because it places the least amount of pressure on the spinal column. It's an excellent seat for meditation and done properly, it's also very healthy for the knees and the hips. Unfortunately, many people develop pain or have trouble learning how to do it. And this video is for people who fall into two general categories. One, people who are working towards Lotus and they're doing fine so far, but would like to avoid the development of knee pain in the future. And secondly, those who have a pre-existing knee injury, such as a torn ligament from running an accident, recent knee surgery, or some other problem that's giving a knee pain in flexion and lotus positions. Having seen a lot of students practicing towards the lotus position and putting themselves into the lotus, I've observed that what seems to be the problem most of the time is torque on the knees. People use their hands to pull themselves into lotus like this. So they grab and then yank on their foot while the knee is only partially bent and try to wrap it into lotus. And that doesn't work because the knee, unfortunately, can twist a little bit when it's partially bent. When you grab the foot, when the knee is not fully straight and not fully bent, the tibia can rotate a little bit and it doesn't set quite properly in the knee joint. So the knee is often thought of as a hinge joint, which is basically accurate, but for the purposes of the lotus is not accurate enough. The two condyles or articular surfaces of the knee are at slightly different levels. This means that as the knee bends, the tibia will slightly, it's not very perceptible, but you can feel it and see it if you pay close attention, will slightly roll internally. When you grab your foot and try to pull it and try to yank it into the lotus position, it does this paradoxical twist and torques the knee, which can lead to uh, distortion and disturbance of the, especially the medial meniscus, as well as the MCL, the medial collateral ligament. And so it's important that when you're working towards lotus, you do it with the knees fully bent. And just after knee surgery, or if there's acute pain already, a great tool to have is just a piece of fabric, very simple. It can be a little uh, mat like this, a section of your yoga mat towel, or just a simple washcloth or hand towel. And we're going to have that at the ready by the side of the mat. And of course, any knee flexion position will be helpful for learning how to do lotus, since deep knee flexion is very necessary to do this healthfully. And so any seated position you can do, like doing Bada Konasana, Janu Shirshansana, Tiryanga Mukha, any of these are going to be helpful, but there's two that I think are the most important because they most explicitly teach the pattern of how to do yoga correctly. Madhichasana A and Madhichasana B. We'll start with Madhichasana A, and we start with the legs straight and then bend the right leg in fully. And it's important that this is a full bend and not a little bit of a bend. And if there starts to be knee pain, we take the towel, the piece of fabric, and place it behind the knee in this way. That moves the ends of the tibia and femur away from each other it's so that if they're pinching and, and there's not enough space inside the knee joint for the meniscus or the other ligaments to be happy, this gives just a little bit of extra spacing between the articular surfaces of the bones. Now, if you can't bend your knee all the way 
then you should spend more time working on some of the other postures, working on the general health of the knee. Some of our students who've recently had knee surgery are able to bend their knee fully. Some others are only able to bend it part way or uh, and they may over time be able to work towards closing it fully and they may be a little bit stuck right here in which case lotus is not going to be possible and should not be attempted and the difference between those is just the surgical technique and what exactly they did so you'd have to consult with your surgeon to determine whether full knee flexion is either viable or a good idea for you but if we can get the knee fully flexed like this we want to be sure that the sitting bone on that same side comes up off the ground just a little bit we don't want it to go anywhere uh, far away from the heel or to start to tip over but sitting bone to heel and just a little bit of space under the sitting bone so that we're in a half squatting position so we, this is also a great thing to do if you're working on knee flexion is just work on a simple squatting position with the hips as close to the floor as possible. So now that we've got the right knee in place, we take the right hand forward, wrap around the knee so the armpit and the knee are coming together, and fold forward a little bit. And this helps to uh, deepen the knee flexion a little bit further as well as shift your weight onto the right foot so that the uh, knee is receiving a little bit of that pressure and closing fully. If you can't bind, if you have a shoulder injury or some other limitation, that's okay. You can just fold forward like this instead. And so this is the important part of getting into half lotus. So we transition, if we're going to come into half lotus, the first leg, we bend the knee fully, put a little bit of weight on it, and then wrap the knee around without letting the knee open. So we don't want to see coming into it and then kicking the leg forward and around, that same bad habit that we've uh, seen, talked about a few minutes ago. So we close it all the way and then wrap it around. And so now here we're in a nice half lotus position. Hopefully it's not painful. If it is painful in the knee, you have the towel there, if it's still painful, don't go on yet. Just keep working on this for a few weeks, a few months until the pain subsides. And then when you're ready to proceed, we're going to come into the squatting position with the second leg in just the same way. So we bring the left foot in close the right leg stays engaged so the ankle doesn't start to descend, dis uh, distend or bow outwards. And we're gonna try to put our weight here on the left leg. At that point, you can take the left foot and bring it as, keep it as close to the body as you can and wrap it around so that you've got a nice tight lotus. And hopefully you'll find that with the uh, rotation of the tibia allowed to uh, move in the way that it needs to biologically, anatomically, that now you will not have that knee pain or, or a little pinching feeling on the inside of your knee. And if you don't have pain and you want to keep it that way, then every time you come into Lotus, do this same thing. It can be quick, but you just come in like this and then uh, You'll, you'll hopefully feel it in the hips. You get a nice foundation that way. And again, don't get lazy and just wrap your knees around like this because we have students who are very healthy who have never had uh, knee pain, but they've been practicing, they've gotten in this habit over the years, and then we meet them and uh, they're talking about a little bit of that same kind of knee pain that. Uh, has developed most likely from that practice of lotus. And then, after you've become very comfortable with the lotus, you can try to work on it without your hands at all. And that's helpful because if you don't use your hands, 
then only the muscle fiber of the leg will be able to be recruited and you won't be able to put any kind of strange torques or forces into the leg whatsoever. And that would look like this. You can do the same action, just kind of wrap it around, and the second one in. And then you, if you don't get all the way, you can just wiggle your feet a little bit until you're in the right position. And also, I'm going to put up another video of ways to work on getting into Lotus without your hands kind of quickly doing like that, which you learn how to do from inverted positions like shoulder stand or head stand. So don't tolerate any pain in your knees. You can try to negotiate with them if you want, but they won't listen to you. Any conversation with the knee tends to be a one direction conversation with the knee telling you it hurts and you listen to that and find a more intelligent way to practice. Thanks for your time, and uh, practice pain-free.